All right. <laughs> uh, a lot of times uh, I get a call when that happens from, from those folks, but thank you for pointing that out. Um, for those of you that can't lip read uh, that are watching this, I just said it's spring break um, and use it as a time to catch up, redo assignments, work on your project. I'll still be answering questions, so please email me. That's, that's it in a nutshell. All right, we're going to continue looking at uh, layouts that float. And we went through sort of just not, not really a full web page, but just sort of a, a exercise kind of web page uh, where we, we uh, talked about the principles of floating stuff. Um, and what I want to do today is actually take those principles and put them, put them into action with, with an actual layout as opposed to, um, you know, ju just of an exercise. And uh, as usual, I'm going to, to take what we had um, before and add to it. The goal today is, I um, actually have a couple, couple layouts I want to do. Uh, both of them sort of look like this. Sort of look like the standard banner. And I know we did a fixed version of, of this kind of layout. This will be a more liquidy version of that layout. So that's one of the things I want to do. The other thing I want to do is achieve that same layout within a container so that the container could be fixed length or very or fixed width or variable width. We could play around doing it both ways. But as the page expands, then the space around it changes a little bit. And, and, and that would be probably more aptly called a jello -y sort of layout because um, we're going to keep um, the, the inside of it fixed. Or at least in one, one version of it we will. We'll go through probably a few versions of these things. Um, and, we're gonna, and I know we've done that before. We've done something similar to that and we use negative margins to accomplish that and relative positioning. Keep in mind that um, think, con consider all these different techniques for, for achieving layout um, on your page with CSS as just tools in your toolbox that you can mix, match, and bring things together. It's, it's impossible for me to cover all the situations that, that you're going to encounter. And therefore, the best thing I can do is try to describe the principles, maybe talk a little bit about some troubleshooting skills, and, and go from there. Uh, we already sort of talked about one troubleshooting skill. If you're not sure why something looks the way it does, put a background color on it. Put, put a, a different background color on it, and, and that sometimes points it out. Another thing you can do is run it through the validator. All right? A lot of times, if you, if you made a, a small mistake that you're not quite catching, the validator will catch it. So those are two pretty good troubleshooting techniques. All right, onward and upward. Um, for this one, I'm going to start with a clean slate. And I have my HTML, and I, I, I stripped out all the style. So it just is a plain old, what the first week of the class it might look like page. And we're going to go and we're going to add, slowly add style back into this. And we're going to do it uh, with, with a floating position on, on different things. So this will also give us a chance to play around again with some of the other parameters and, 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 and we can see what we come up with. All right. In this one, I'm going to ignore the container. <clears throat> That's one thing I mentioned before, <clears throat> excuse me, that it is possible to create a uh, div and just ignore it in the style sheet, in which case it won't get any special formatting really and, and you know, you're, you're, you're good to go. You know, it, it doesn't really cause any harm to have it in there. If there's no style associated with it, then, you know, the, the browser just decides what to do with it. So that's what I'm going to do in this first example. And I'm going to do this a bit at a time. All right? A bit at a time. So let me go into the CSS file for this. And I'm going to do something just because I don't like the fonts. I'll go and change, we'll, we'll save that for later. 
I'll go and, and first of all, I'll set for the banner. I'll set a width of hundred percent. Or we'll make ninety five percent. Or eighty five. Uh, and we'll give it a border. Border five pixel dotted green. That should be lovely. And we're going to float it to the left. Now, this isn't going to really look good because we haven't gone and done the other divs yet. We'll see how it's going to, going to appear. Now again, just to review, remember that if you say pound sign banner, all right, that means the thing on the page that has an ID of banner gets the style rule. We've covered, I believe, three ways to define a style rule and then maybe some other variations where you mix and match. You can define a style rule uh, via an HTML tag. So for example, I could say A and then define a style rule where all the links get that particular style rule. I can also define a ID. All right. And typically, I put my IDs on divs, but don't think that you have to put the ID on a div. You can put the ID on any element that you want. All right. The restriction with an ID, though, is that it, th there, there can only be one thing on the page with that given ID. All right. It's meant to identify that. So you, know, you think your student ID, your student number, that identifies you distinctly. Well, an ID on an HTML element should identify that one specific HTML element on the page. The other thing that we can do, I think we've talked about, and I'll try to work this into this example, but uh, is a class. And a class is similar to the ID. The difference being is that it's okay to have several things on the page with the same class. You know, if you think you know, a class can contain more than one member, right? This class contains more than one member. All right, so this might be a good way to look at it. So let's look and see what our start is like. And don't be surprised if it doesn't look good. Don't be surprised if it doesn't look any different. I probably forgot to save, would be my guess. There we go. That looks a little different. All right. Um, not as bad as I thought it might be, uh, but hey. All right. I probably want to put some padding in there, so I'll do that now. And what I can do is I can say banner h1 padding 2 pixels margin two pixels and we'll do the same thing for paragraph. Alright, so there we have, looks a little bit better. Notice that it actually made it smaller. Uh, that's because again it, it took off the default margins in, in padding. Um, remember, everything on your page is going to look uh, is going to get its appearance one of two ways: um, either the browser defaults or the CSS you create. So if you put in CSS, you're taking control of that particular uh, element. All right, let's go and let's float the navigation now to the left, and I'm going to say pound nav. Float left, and I'll make a width of 200 pixels we'll start with that and we'll see what that does for us then I'm going to go in and make the content div also float left And I'll give a width of 50%. 
Let's see how that looks. All right, that puts the navigation over here and this over here. I'm temporarily going to put a color on these just so that we can see um, where they are for sure uh, as I move back and forth. And I don't know, I might leave the color in, I might take it out when I'm done. Um, Let's on the content, let's do a background of green and a color of white. And on the nav, let's do a background of yellow. All right. So, notice as I make this bigger, the banner div and the content div get smaller because I've expressed those as percentages. Whereas the navigation div stays the same size because I gave it a, uh, an absolute 200 pixel width. Now keep in mind that sometimes it can get a little confusing if you're mixing pixel width and relative. You really have to sort of, uh, you, you know, sometimes think it through. Now notice if I make uh, it past a certain point, boom, that pops down below. Which again, might be appropriate if we were doing, say, a mobile site. All right? Uh, because again, then we'd have the navigation on top and, and that down there, underneath that. All right? So the fact that it does that might not be a bad thing, is, is what I'm saying. And this really is a pretty liquidy site. About the only thing that isn't relative is the uh, width of the navigation. We've given a certain fixed uh, width for that. Yeah, a question? Uh huh? No, that doesn't. That that uh, the question is is what about like an iPad zoom? Or, or like on the Android device, if you do the two-finger pinch zoom, whatever. No, that, that doesn't affect that. All that does is, think of that, that doesn't affect the original page. That's, that's more or less like putting it under a microscope, or not a microscope, but uh, a magnifying glass. And it, it just makes it look bigger, but it doesn't really, um, doesn't really affect the, uh, the, uh, the, the page and, and, and those aspects of it. Did you have your hand up a, while, a minute ago? Okay, All right. I wasn't sure. I was kind of in the middle of a thought and I didn't want to stop and then I thought, well, maybe, maybe we did have a question over here. All right. Now again, just to practice, I'm going to do some more with the, the CSS uh, on this page. Um, first of all, I want to put some margins so those things don't run right into each other and so that um, there's some space between the, the, the um, banner and the navigation and the content area and then so that there's some space between the banner and or not the banner the the navigation and the content area so let's go and let's put some uh, margins here I'm gonna put and I'm gonna do these changes one at a time so we see immediately the effect as opposed to doing 50 different changes and then looking at that so I want to isolate the, the the effect I'm gonna do a margin top 10 pixel margin right 20 pixel so what did that do that pushed it 10 from that because remember the margin is the space between divs or not divs, between elements. In this case, the elements are divs, but, but it's not just divs. It put 10 space between there and there, 10 pixels between there and there, and it put 20 pixels between there and there. All right, I'm gonna go and do the same thing on the other one, but I'm gonna use a different notation. What's a different way that I could put the same margin of 10 and 20 on this using a different notation? Right. 
yeah. Uh, what I could do is I could do something like this. I could say just margin, and that will allow me to set all four margins in all four dimensions, not dimensions really, uh, uh, directions. All right. So I could say margin at the top of 10 pixels, margin to the right of 20 pixels. If I just left it at that, it would give me a margin of 10 at the bottom and a margin of 20 to the left. All right. Uh, if I don't, I can say zero pixels, zero pixels. Then it would go top, right, bottom, left. All right. So it, it repeat, it, it cycles around. Yeah, it wraps around. Once you get to the end, it starts over again. Now we'll see something interesting here. All right. So there we have. We're back in business as far as that goes. What if I put 20 pixels there? All right. I think I mentioned this before. If not, if I did, it's a good time to review it. If not, it's a good time to bring it up. So now, the nav has 20 pixel margin to the right. This has 20 pixel margin to the left. Would you expect now then to have 40 pixels between them? No. Well, you might expect that, but you'd be mistaken. All right. The margins actually collapse. So if you say that you want a 20 and 20 margin, then it looks and says, okay, this div wants to be 20 pixels away from that div. This div also wants to be 20 pixels away. So, okay, I'll just leave it 20 pixels away. Then both of them are happy. So it doesn't like sum it up all right, with margins. So if I do this, uh, wow, yeah, hmm. let's look at this in IE. Uh, I should keep some like, um, what, some crinkly paper, like wrapping paper here. And whenever I started into running problems, I could just like crinkle it by the mic like this. I'm sorry, we're, we're experiencing technical difficulties here. I am not sure why it did not do that. Let's view it in NIE and see what it does. Mm, still looks like 40 there as well. Um, that might be only vertical margins. Let me test that theory out. Okay, top. Okay. So let's, let's go and let's make those zero again. Let's put a bottom margin on the banner. Of 10 pixels. And let's see. Did it again. Uh, I have to confess I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. I'll do some research and, and post some references that, that can explain this phenomenon. Or it'll be spring break and I'll forget about it. And when we come back, I'll claim it never happened. All right, one, one of those two things. Uh, I'll have to decide which one. I, I do have to say um, I, I, that is a bit unexpected. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm missing there. I'm not sure if, if the fact that I floated it changed anything at all. That could be a possibility as well. All right. Anyhow, so we're back to this. And let's see. Let me go and remove that. Did I? Yeah. Let's go and save it. There we go. And as a consequence of this, I ended up testing it in IE2, which is probably good. All right. Now again, there's some other things I would probably want to do with this. If this is navigation, I probably want um, it to um, uh, get rid of the bullet points, maybe put some space between them, make them look a little nicer, make the links look a little nicer. So I can go into the style sheet and does anyone recall how I could remove the bullet points next to the links?
It's list style type. Where do I put that on? Oh, nav UL, actually. So I go pound sign nav UL, and I can say list style type none. Now, you know, I could do this a bunch of different ways. You just have to think of the way that makes most sense for you. I could, another way to do this would be, I could put, it's kind of too late to do it now, but I could put an ID on that UL, all right, and say nav, you know, whatever the ID of that is. Or I could put a class on it and apply it that way. So there's a lot of different ways I could apply it. Um, in this case, I have my HTML fixed, and, and my goal is to not to change it, so I'm going to do it this way. And that probably, if you think about it, probably is a good way to do it. You know, On the rest of the page, I probably want my um, um, unordered list to have their bullet points. If, if in the middle of the page I had you know, a list of tips for growing vegetables, for example, I would want those to have their bullet points. Whereas the navigation, I've, I've stored it as a list, but I don't necessarily want to do that. All right, so let's go, and what that will do is get rid of those. All right, I can go in and put some space between the LIs by going pound sign nav LI. Margin top. 10 pixels, that'll push them down a little bit to give a little more space, make it look more like navigation. And I might even want to do something with the color because the default colors don't necessarily look particularly good um, here. So what I could do is I could say any link in the nav section, I want to have a color of black and I want to make it bold. How do I make it bold? Well, I think I know how to do it, but then again, I thought I knew how to do margins too. So we're going to go to W3Schools and verify my thought. Um, no, I don't, I, I didn't quite hear what you said, but I don't think, think that that's correct. So we'll go to text, and the attribute is, drum roll please, Font weight, font weight bold. So I could go in here and make the link color black, font weight bold. So there's our links, they're bold. I might want to make it so if I visited a link, it looks different. Let's make it a slightly different color. Pound sign. Um, let's make it a shade of gray if I visited it. Yeah, thank you. Dot visited or colon visited? Colon visited, I think. Yeah, there we go. 
and the home just looks a little different. Yeah, you can tell on the screen that. Then I might want to do a hover uh, on this. And do something like hover. Um, no, we'll make it red. And we'll remove the font weight of bold. normal and hover so now as I put my mouse over it the link changes and gives a little bit of a visual cue that my mouse is on top of a link Would you have to that's a good question why what what would happen if I did not specify Font weight normal here. Close. It would do what was defined for a link. All right. So actually, I didn't have to do this here because I'm not overriding it. I would have to do it here though. Whoops. Why did I type that in there? I just want to give uh, two visual cues that that is the link that I'm hovering over. All right. One visual cue is that it changed colors. But what about if someone is colorblind? A second visual cue is the, 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 the weight of it has changed. It's gone from bold to normal. Actually, probably a better way to do it would be to reverse those. We'll make a font weight normal on here. And as you put your mouse over it, it becomes bold. That's probably a, a, a more logical way to do it. So really you wouldn't have to put font weight. I wouldn't really have to put font weight normal, right? If I wanted to do that. All right. Now as I put my mouse on it, it becomes red and bold. One of the topics that we'll cover right after break is a topic of accessibility, uh, website accessibility. And one of the things that we'll learn in there is that you never only want to use color to show something. It's okay to use color to represent things on the web page. Um, but you want to give other visual cues as well. All right. So in this case, I'm using color to designate that um, the, uh, the link was being hovered. All right. I'm also using and changing the, the font weight. I suppose I could go in with that thought and and say, well, gee, I should do something for visited links too. I should I should do something else for visited links too. And yeah, that's probably a good point. Let's do a font style of what's oblique. Let's make the font style oblique for this. Yeah, I don't know what the difference between that and italics are. Slight different directions, really? Oh, I, did I just say italic? Yeah. It might depend on the specific font. It might be that depending on the specific font, it would, it would be more or less slanted. Maybe oblique is more slanted than, than italics or whatever. All right. At any rate, now I'm, now I'm doing a better job accessibility-wise because I've made uh, those things uh, have two visual signals of something as opposed to one. Um, and for someone that, that can see, all right, so they have two visual cues. For someone that is colorblind now and can't see the colors, well, they at least can get the visual cue. I'm also going to make these links a little bigger 
just out of uh, general principles. So I'll say font size maybe 1.2 M. You can really have fun if you want to. Fun being defined as my definition of fun, not the average person's. We can make the font a lot bigger if they put their mouse on it. In addition to making it that, or we could go real crazy with it. When I say 2.4M, let's make it 5M. Oh, no wonder it didn't work. Yeah, okay. That didn't seem right. Font size, there we go. Yeah. So, hey, can live it up. All right, let's look at to see if there's any other changes we want to make to this before we call this layout a day. But the other thing I would say is I'll make some, put some padding in here just to make it look cleaner. And I'll put on the content area a padding of uh, 10 pixels, let's say. And there we go. So not bad. As we hit a certain point, boom, it drops down below. But that might be okay. Questions about this? All right, what I'm going to do now is um, this, if you recall, was all done without doing anything with the container. So I didn't touch the container. So all these styles. Um, have nothing to do with the container. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to try to position the stuff uh, within a container. And this will be more of a jello-y kind of thing, but uh, again, it will use the float. This will be an alternative to using negative margins. There's something about me that doesn't like negative margins. All right. For one thing, if I go and add something so that it gets longer, I have to go and adjust my margin. And, and I don't like to do more work than I have to do, right? If I make a change, I just want to change it in one place and have the change happen all over. So let's go and let's make another copy of this site. Close all these windows. Let's go and copy this. And we'll make a website 7. And I'm going to keep the rest of it the same. So we're going to start out with it being the same. And I'm going to go and style, put some style on the container. So what I'm going to do is I'll go in here and I'll say pound sign container. Let's give it a width of. 600 pixels. Background of black. Ah, let's just leave it a background of white. Um, and I'll do margin 0px auto. And what that auto does is that centers that within the container. So, the container, well, uh, le, le, this is, I realize what I said sounds confusing. It's going to center the container div within, the, within its container, and its container is the body of the page. All right. All right. So then we have this. And 
we then have, as it gets smaller and smaller, the sides adjust to that. Now, I have a question. All right. I didn't change anything about the content div, right? Yet the content div behaves different. The content div does not get smaller. Okay, and, and the answer is, for those of you that, that, that didn't hear what the, the student says, is because that content div is now in a container that has a fixed width. All right. Before it was in the container, and the container had its default width, which is 100% of the page. So as we change the size of the page, the size of the container changed, and therefore the relative size of the content area changed, because we defined it as some percentage. I forget the percentage, 50% or whatever. Now, all right, it's in a container that has defined a fixed width. We've defined it as 800 pixels. All right, therefore, no matter how big I make the window, its container, which is that container div, stays at 800 pixels, which means that it's going to stay at 400 pixels plus and minus the padding and all that. All right. So always remember, anything you do relates to that particular um, uh, thing in its container. For example, let's say I wanted to center this H1. All right. If I were to say and go in here, pound sign content. H1 text align center there it is You know what? That's not an H1. It's an H2. I'm very disappointed in you. I did that as a test to see if you were paying attention, and, <laughs> and none of you caught it. So, okay. Didn't want to embarrass me, huh? There we go. And now it's centered. All right. But notice it's centered within its container. What is its container? Its container is a content div. So whenever you center something, you center something within its container. So that's how that will go. Yes? What happens when you change the margin of the container? What do you mean? The margin pixels, like you have them zero right now. Mm -hmm. so you change it up to five. On, on, on the container? Oh, it'll... The, the, the side to side will still work because I have five pixels auto. It'll just be dropped down some from the, from the top of the page. Okay. Yeah, so if I go and make that five, I'll tell you what, I'll make it more dramatic. So I'll make it 50 so it's, so it's more visible. And we go and look at this. It dropped it down so much from the top. If you use percentages for what? For the container? Yeah. Yeah. If I did, let's say, that's, that's going to be my next version of this. Let's go and save this one, and we can come back to it if we want. Let's go and try one more thing with this. Instead of a width of 60, uh, 600 pixels, we'll make a width of, let's say, 
All right. Starts out like that, looking roughly the same, probably because, again, our, our screen's probably close to 1,000 pixels, so therefore 60% um, of it is right around 600, or yeah, 60% of it is right around uh, 600. As we make this smaller then, It drops down. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is more liquid still. Yeah. Remember, the, to describe it as liquid or jello, it's not like absolute ranking. You know? It's not like your page validates or it doesn't validate where there's some specific criteria you have to meet. Ice, liquid, jello are descriptive terms. All right? And the more that stuff moves around, the more liquidy it is. The less it moves around, the more ice-like it is. I, I don't know, maybe we have slush pages that are somewhere between some of the things are liquidy and some of them are jello-y and some of them, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. The important thing to recognize, again, is, is we're talking about, it's a, it's a convenient shorthand to talk about certain behavior uh, on the page. All right? But now with the relative thing, we do run into danger of, hey, it can't fit. If this is 60% of the page and this is 200, there's going to be a point where I can't fit my 50% of the available space in alongside the navigation and it will drop it down below. And again, maybe that's not a problem. Maybe that's not a problem depending on the screen size and whether you view it on a mobile or whatever. That may be exactly what you want. In fact, if you do see a lot of sites that are designed specifically for mobiles are very much linear. All right? They don't have the, the, the big layout with like a, you know, multiple columns. They're typically one column. All right? And so they're, they would look sort of like this. All right? Questions about any of these layouts? Remember, these are just tools. These are tools for you to do. You know, you mix and match these different techniques. I can't possibly cover every way that you would choose to lay it out. Just, again, you know, you need to decide how you're going to lay out your page and how you're going to make it look. The other thing about liquid and, 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 and so on is that it's not a value judgment either. It's not like I'm saying that, well, one is superior to the other. If one was superior than the other, then we wouldn't even bother teaching the other, right? We would just always do it one way. But depending on the project and depending on the layout, depending on a number of different factors, you have these techniques that you can go and apply to a particular situation. One thing that we'll do later on the, uh, down the line, and we'll talk about it in this class, we actually spend a little more time talking about it in another class, is being able to switch out style sheets depending on certain circumstances. So for example, I could have a style sheet that looks good on a desktop or laptop, and I could have a different style sheet that looks good on a mobile device. And then depending on the device, I can switch the, the style sheet and, and have it formatted nicely. We'll look at an example of that towards the end of the, the course. All right, project. I want to spend just a couple minutes talking about the project. I want to be that little nagging voice in the back of your head when you're having fun next week. Gee, should I work on my project? All right. Um, and, and be honest, there, there's no points here. There's, you're not going to impress me or disappoint me, depending on your answer to this question. So it doesn't really matter. How many of you have an idea for your project? Wow. That's great. Uh, those of you that don't, I may have a service learning opportunity coming up where you would actually develop a site like for a nonprofit organization. Um, I'm going to talk with two different groups of people um, over break. All right? And um, if it pans out and if it's something we can do, I can present that as an option. All right? Oh yeah, yeah, I'll post that on Angel as soon as I have any information on it. So those of you, or, or even if you're not really satisfied with your project and you haven't done too much work on it, maybe you can, you can junk it and adopt that. Do I have a volunteer to say what they're working on? Because what I hear from a lot of students is, gee, it's hard to come up with a project. Do I have, a, does anyone want to volunteer what they want to work on?
Okay. All right. A, a website for an artist gallery. All right. Um, do you have any challenges or, or questions um, about like creating a design for that, or, or is it pretty clear how you want to design it? Okay. Okay. All right. The concern with that, anything like that, is it's going to be image heavy. So therefore, things that you can do to maybe make it so it doesn't take the, uh, bigger to load. You know, certain image sizes. Maybe have small thumbnails that you click on and make larger ones or whatever. All those things are are, are possibilities. Towards the very end of the class, we we talk about uh, uh, just a very brief intro to JavaScript, and that might be beneficial. Uh, to you as well. Other volunteers of topics. Yes. Okay. 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 So, so attempting to create a website for uh, a business. Um, uh, uh, an actual real life business. Now, not everyone has that opportunity, right? Not everyone, you know, you know, them or their spouse runs a business, so I don't expect you to do that. But you can always make up a business. If you thought, gee, it would be great to run a bookstore, you know, you could make up a business of Mike's bookstore and do a website for it and do, do the same sort of thing. Um, are you running in any, any, any challenges as far as designing? Oh, yeah, okay. I haven't, haven't gotten far enough. All right. All right. Well, hey, that's good. That's, that, that's fine. Uh, again, I guess my point is, is if you look at the calendar, you know, it's March 1st, right? Yeah. It's March 1st, right? And we are eight weeks through a 15-week semester, all right? So we're half or a little more than half, I guess, depending on how you count it. Pardon me? No. 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 Uh, so we're roughly halfway through it, you know. This is half time, you know. In, in my mind, it seems like we just started this class, <laughs> right? I don't know how it is for you, all right. My point is, is that time goes by quick. Probably because we're having just so much fun in this class is why the time is flying. Pardon me? Yeah, this is your best class? Well, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, this is one of my favorites to teach. I have, I have two or three... I enjoy teaching all my classes, but I can honestly say, and those of you that have me more than one class, you can keep track of how many times I say this, all right? Uh, but this is one of my favorite classes to teach, and, and time does go by really quick. And, and you may look and say a project design that's due, I think, in April, and then a final project that's due in May, oh, that's, you know, May, ho, oh, ho, that's what, well, it isn't. And it'll go by quick. <laughs> And especially if you, if you have other classes with other assignments and all that and finals and that sort of thing. So, again, be proactive. One thing I don't mind doing is looking at what you've done so far and giving you commentary on it, right? Especially, you know, as far as the design goes, the design document. Am I on the right track? Send me what you have, as little or as much, and I can comment on it and tell you that. Think about it, you know. If, if you send me a draft of it, and I say, yeah, it looks good, how can you end up getting a bad grade on it, right? I, you know, there's no Jekyll and Hyde here. If I say it's good today, it's going to be good when you turn it in, right? So therefore, uh, again, I can give you feedback for it. We can talk about it. Um, share with your classmates, and, and, and don't lose track of it. So, you know... Hopefully, I'll be the little voice in the back of your head that will let you have some fun during spring break, but will also nag you into, into going back to your project. All right, questions. Are we, are you allowed to make it in Flash? You can include Flash in it if you want, but I don't want it to be exclusively Flash. All right. So, yeah. Um, I, I don't want exclusive Flash. Um, you could include some flash elements in it if you wanted. All right. If you have more specific things, you know, maybe you can sketch out what you're planning on doing, and, and we can we can we can go from there. Yes. Repeat that. Uh, 
Navigation? Could be done with JavaScript, could be done with CSS positioning. All right. You know, how do how do I uh, you know how do I want to say it? You know, I can't I can't uh, I can't give all my secrets out in one day. Right? <laughs> then there would be no need for you to come back the next time. So through CSS positioning, you can get that to work. Now, the issue with that is it doesn't work on some older browsers. All right. Uh, but then it would just work just like a normal uh, link. So it's really, that's what they, again, they call degrading gracefully. In other words, it doesn't work, but it doesn't blow up either. They at least get, get done. So that's your hint. All right. And if you can't figure it out between now and when we resume, please feel free to ask again. And, and maybe I'll answer. No, I will answer. All right. We'll see you over in LAMB. <laughs>